Okay, uh, this is Sandman with uh, the 311 Griffins, 311 Griffins YouTube channel, and um, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to reskin the A10C. Uh, this one that you see here on this desktop is not totally complete. It should be complete now, but it's not when I took this picture. But anyway, um, really quickly, things you're going to need. Um, go to digitalcombatsimulator.com, go to downloads, miscellaneous, scroll towards the bottom and you will see a texture template for the A10C. This is a layered Photoshop texture template. So there are 12 different files and they are layered. It's very important that you get the layered ones because you will not have to mess with rivets, shadows, dirt, decals, etc, etc you'll be able to edit a lot easier with those uh, with those layers. <clears throat> you can also go to the user files and there's some very handy things in here. You can filter uh, for A10C, skin, filter, boom, up pops a bunch of filters or a bunch of skins, I'm sorry, that people have made. Also I'm using GIMP to uh, do my textures, uh, that's kind of a free version of Photoshop, so if you want to do it for free, get GIMP. It's pretty powerful and easy to use. Uh, I'm quite amateur at it, but I can do a decent amount of stuff with it, even though I'm not very good at using it. So, Also, you're going to want to get DXT BMP. I will provide a link for that, and then Notepad++, or plus plus, or whatever it's called. <clears throat> so, uh, let us start in GIMP with uh, our our first um, file. This is the A file, so what we've got here is the front of the fuselage. We have the bottom of the fuselage and the sides, the top of the nose, some of the doors on the bottom, uh, various things like that <clears throat> uh, inside of the ladder door. Uh, and as you can see over here, just really quickly, uh, here in GIMP, there are all these layers. This is pretty much the way it comes from you know when you download that file. Some of the layers are going to be invisible that should be visible. Some of them will be visible that should be invisible. Um, like there, you can see those lines changing. Let's see, either dirt. I just took the dirt off. So that's a, a little detail layer that kind of gives some wear on, on the airplane. This is the beauty of these layers. Quite literally, uh, there's all this stuff that is included in there <clears throat> that you don't have to mess with. Now down here, I've gotten a little bit clunky with... Um, th this is the way I use GIMP. I duplicate layers when I want to make changes so that I don't ruin a layer. And then I just make make things invisible that I don't want to see anymore like I'm not happy with this layer so I made it invisible I could delete it but I haven't it doesn't really matter I did have the original gray and blue gray layers in here uh, but I deleted them apparently <coughs> uh, probably not a good idea to do because um, whenever you try to select a color on this uh, multicam layer you're not going to but if you have a solid gray background and you just wanted to change the entire layers background you could do it um, pretty easily. Now, you can always right click and just say duplicate layer or add new layer and it will add one. Um, I also want alpha channels on all my layers. These have alpha channels which allows for the transparency. So if you don't have an alpha channel you just right click and, and go add alpha channel. Uh, those are just some quick tips. Um, another handy thing is the selection process. Uh, select all, select none, invert selection, those are handy. And this tool right here allows you to select a color. So really quickly, this, this is going to be, um, I'm going to make these all invisible. I've got this transparent layer here as the background visible, and we're just going to fill it with this goofy orange color. There you go. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to just draw selection here. I'm, I'm just trying to show some stuff real quick. I'm going to delete everything in that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now, if I select none, I have nothing selected. I can click on this, and I can click the orange section, and it selects everything that matches that color of orange. And if I double-click that, 
you can change this threshold to include more orange or less orange that is maybe slightly different. You you can change the I guess the closeness that the color that the pixel has to match the color you're selecting uh, before it will actually include it in the selection. Uh, I can also invert the selection. Now all the transparent part is selected and you can use that tool to select just the transparent part as well. Uh, I'm going to invert that, delete that. Um, okay, now I have this. Uh, this is this is a pattern <clears throat> that I'm going to try to apply, and uh, this is based on an ATAX camo pattern, but I've changed it to a blue-gray kind of a scheme. And you can see that I've already uh, it was a quarter of this size. And I've already copied it and mirrored it. If you don't mirror these kinds of camouflage patterns, you get really bad seams. And I find that it's easier to deal with a mirrored pattern that looks a little funny rather than a seamed pattern with obvious lines on it. You're going to have obvious lines anyway, uh, so I try to make those as, um, as easy to work with as possible. So we're going to copy that, come back into this one, and we want to make sure we've got this layer selected. This is one of the harder parts of GIMP to, to, to get used to, is always coming over here and messing with your layers, checking your layer to make sure you're on the right layer. And it can get a little goofy, as I'll show you here in a minute. Um, I'll make sure I have select none. And we are going to edit, paste. <clears throat> so this puts a floating section up here. And it's at the very top. Uh, which can be a little confusing, but uh, we are going to bring that up here. Uh, this is a fairly large file, so I think what I can do is scale this and make it look right. You have to be careful with the scaling because you don't want it to be too large or too small. And you want to make sure, well, when I'm scaling, I make sure that this chain is connected here otherwise it will only if it's if it's broken it will only change the scale of whichever one of these you're changing either width or height if it's connected it keeps the aspect ratio <coughs> so I think I'm going to actually just make this big enough to cover the entire page all at once we'll see how that looks it's bigger than my layer but it's not going to show up and I think what this will allow me to do uh, yeah let's just go ahead and do that for now it's gonna scale it there we go that's probably not gonna look too bad I'm trying to think well I'm not gonna worry about it now you you can um, the, the problem with all these different files is that where this matches up with the next part of the fuselage right over here I don't know if this camo pa pattern is going to match where it hooks up with the next layer or with the, I'm sorry with the next texture for that part of the fuselage I'm just not for sure um, so you can really mess with kind of cutting these patterns up and moving them around to try to get them to look right I'm not going to mess with it right now obviously with this kind of a program the more work you put into it the better it's going to look and the more you zoom in and really get into the details, the better it's going to look. So we're going to anchor this layer. It anchors it down here. And now I want to duplicate. Uh, do I want to duplicate this? Yeah, let's duplicate the layer because we want some darker sections. Okay, and now I'm going to make... Uh, let's do this one. No, it doesn't matter. Let's do this one. Okay, we're going to make that one we're going to hide everything but that one for now. <clears throat> you can see it has some opacity to it. I want to select, I can't really select the camo pattern because you'll see in a minute. Uh, whoops, I'm on the wrong layer. That's what I was talking about. Select none. Come on. My mouse is acting up. Okay. Shift control A. Select none. We want to select this layer, and if we try to select that camo pattern, it's going to select all this weird stuff. All the Because it's a camo pattern, it's a bunch of different colors. So we want to select the invisible part, which is what we want to select anyway. 
and then we're going to come down here on this and we have the region selected that we want to delete. I, I literally want to delete that off of my new camo pattern. So we're going to pick the eraser. Uh, I'm going to make this huge. Boom! And it's going to log, uh, log my computer down. Probably shouldn't have made it that large. Ah, come on. There we go. But, uh, okay. And now, select all. Let me go ahead and delete this section out here. And you might ask why we're doing this. Well, I want this part to be darker than the other parts. So now we can go up to, uh, is it filters? Colors. Colors. Brightness, contrast. And I can turn this brightness down. I think I've been using about negative 40. See, it got a little bit darker. Okay, so it's a little bit darker. And I think that's all I'm going to do for now. Um, I was going to make this bottom part a blue-gray um, instead of this camo pattern, but the whole reason for doing a blue-gray camo scheme is so that I don't really have to do the bottom side. I'm going to just, uh, well, I need to save this as, we're going to call this, uh, whoops, let's put this, um, let's do this. That's uh, this is XCF is the GIMP file. So we're gonna save that um, someday today. Okay. Whoops. Sometimes I get confused as to what in windows are open and which ones aren't. So, okay, we have saved that. That retains all the layers in either the PSD file for Photoshop or the XCF file for uh, GIMP. It it remembers all these layers. Oh, and another thing I meant to talk about, um, like for instance, these USAF markers, you can go in here and put whatever you want there. That's the beauty of layers. So I have emblems somewhere up here. I don't remember. It may not be labeled the the kind of label that I want, but uh, I don't remember where it is. Element photo is the one. So this emblem here and this emblem here those are in this element photo uh, actually no sorry they're in this it's the 104th fighter squadron is what the original file came with and I didn't rename the layer but um, anyway you just find the layer that you want to manipulate uh, that has the things that you want to change and then you go in and add your little files and you do it just like I added the background you pull up your your other image that you've created for nose art or whatever or the shark mouth and you just copy it, paste it down to the layer that you want, anchor it down after you move it and scale it. Okay. Now, in the newer GIMP, the older one you could just save as whatever kind of file you wanted, but now if you're going to be merging these layers together, you have to export it. And we're going to select file type. We want this to be a bitmap. Bitmap. And we're going to export and then you click on advanced options 24 gig uh, 24 bit bitmap it's going to save it 